So when you um create poetry, when you doing when you write poems, like is it something that you intentionally sit and do? Is it something that just comes to you? And like what inspires your poetry? So hmm, there's like so many different answers to that. Sometimes it'll just come to me. And I feel like when that happens, it never comes to me at like a good time. Like I'm always in the middle of some like I'll have the light off. I'm laying down. I'm ready to go to sleep. And then like something will come up out of nowhere. I'm in the middle of taking a shower. Now I got to reach out, drive my hands, grab my phone, type it up to myself real quick. Like stuff will come at the most random time. I can be in the middle of I'm on the highway headed to work and some will come to me. So it's crazy. But at the same time, it's like if you don't stop and either make yourself remember what it was or write it down or type it in your phone, it'll be gone. So it's like I'll have to find a way to, you know, make sure that I have access to something to keep it later or I'll, you know, how we'll always have like mental notes, quote unquote, like, oh, I'll just keep it in my head. And then that's, that's always the moment where somebody stop and talk to you or something. And you're like, dang, I forgot what it was. And you know it was fire, but you can't remember. Um, but there will also be times where I'll sit and, you know, attempt to write some intentionally. And I think sometimes when I'll just journal and just free write, stuff comes to me easier than when I intentionally try to sit down and write a poem. Because I feel like Sometimes when I have a thought process of, okay, I'm about to write something, I'll put so much pressure on myself because I'm already going into it thinking, how can I make this better than the last thing I wrote? And sometimes I'll get writer's block because I'm trying so hard to make it the best thing ever that I'm not just writing and letting it happen. However, I do have quite a few breakup poems. And when I'm angry, oh, I was coming so easy. Don't even cook. Like, I definitely feel like most of those I wrote in one sitting because it was like, okay, here's everything that I feel about you. And it was just a one and done of like, oh, yeah, that's the money right there. (laughs) So it kind of varies depending on the situation and like what I'm talking about, where I'm at in life. And of course, there's other like external factors as well. If I have a lot going on and my brain is already cluttered, then I can't really focus on writing. So it's, it's a toss up of how it goes but there will also be times where I'll just try to like set the tone to write something where I might just go to like Starbucks give me some coffee have a journal put on like some relaxing instrumentals and then just kind of see what comes to me so it happens in different ways yeah yeah it it gets like that it gets like that sometimes too like because I'm even when it comes to like the show like I'll get like I'll get ideas and like I'll jump up and be like oh 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 and it'll be literally nothing that I can do about it and it's just like okay well so now what and that's actually why like I always have like some form of like journal like like, you journal thank you five below Uh, (laughs) (laughs) oh but like I'll always have something close by because it's almost like that stuff hits you and if you don't catch it it's gone it's out of there it's out of and like you said, it'll be like, man, that was good. And it never comes back. Like, it's not like a situation where a song pops up in your head and later on you're like, oh, I need to listen today. You forget me. And the next day he's like, oh, yeah, it comes to your head again. Once that idea is gone, it just goes into like this random memory loss landfill or something never to be seen or heard again. You're like, oh, I really need that. But I don't even know what the what is anymore. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It is kind of crazy. It is kind of crazy how that goes on, how that happens that way. So one thing that I do want to ask, too, because I remember this from the notes that you left me. You said that you like to inspire people. So when you write poetry, like, is that something that you keep in mind or is that just like a personal thing? Like, do you think that's more of like in your everyday life? I think that's more of like a personal thing that I try to do. So like on my um poetry page on Facebook and then also on my website I'll try to just add in like motivational stuff here and there just to keep people inspired because it's always so much craziness and nonsense going on in the world so I try to like offset that you know in ways that I can and sometimes I'll do like giveaways as well so like for Mother's Day and Father's Day I did a giveaway contest um for people and then I'll also do like 
you know, just like motivational captions, quotes, um, put up like photos because I'm into like photography. I'm not a photographer, but I just like capturing those like beautiful or like unique moments if I'm out of town or even just local stuff in the area and just having like something cool or motivational text to go with it as well as having like reels um, that I'll put up. So a lot of the ones on my page on Facebook are just like waterfalls or just like really relaxing stuff to help people like de-stress, like meditation type of stuff without the like talking through it portion, but just stuff where people can just kind of have that pick me up and just, you know, give them that motivation, encouragement to just have something to have a better day. Huh. Okay. So you just like creating like a bunch of like motivational content and then just creating things to make people just feel good and feel inspired. Yeah. I like that. I was like trying to like create like a safe space where like when people scroll, of course they go see flyers mixed in, but also be able to have something to be like, okay, I needed that. So that's really the ideal there is to just have like a one-stop shop where it's like, hey, if you're trying to get out the house, here's what I got going on. But also, like, if you're having a day where you just need to pick me up, like, hey, this is a good place for you to be, to be able to just read up on stuff or just watch those different videos of being able to just see views of the ocean or just waterfalls, different things like that, to be able to just be like, okay, I'm I'm all right. My day is going to be okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. So, like, what what ways do you use? Like, what are some strategies that you use? Like, what are your pick-me-ups? What are your ways to, like... What are your what are your getaways? What are your escapes? What makes you feel good? For me, I really like going for like walks. I feel like that's really relaxing or like sometimes jogs as well. It just kind of depends on the mood for the day. Um, since I just recently started a new job, I haven't had any time. I've built up yet, but I really love traveling too. I think that is one of the best ways to just really, you know, get rejuvenated and just get your mind together, clear your thoughts. Um, I want to say maybe like four or five years ago, I came to this realization of just being like, there's so many things in the world and opportunities I've missed out on trying to wait around on other people, waiting around on their schedule, whether or not they feel like it, if they had a good or bad day. And so I don't remember what birthday it was, but I randomly was like, you know what, I'm just going to take a solo trip. And so for my birthday, I went to louisville kentucky and i literally had the time of my life i could do as much or as little as i wanted i could go eat wherever i wanted i didn't have to compromise with anybody and not that that's the issue but it literally was about me and sometimes when you're a person where you want to make sure everybody else is okay you feel selfish when you do stuff for yourself so to have a trip where i was away from everybody and everything i knew be able to see new scenery try new food and just do stuff that was revolved around myself, I came back just feeling like just a new, you know? And from there, I just started going to more places. So traveling is really big for me because I feel like it allows you to have a deeper connection with yourself, understand who you are, what you like, what you don't like. But it also builds up a confidence of saying, if I can have fun by myself, I really can get out in the world and live. I don't have to wait on anybody and again a lot of times I think there are moments and opportunities and things we miss out on because we feel like well my friend has to be there with me but if this means a lot to you you should still go to that concert or you should still go to the the wine tasting of me or whatever it is yeah you you have to deal with those thoughts of like I look lonely but you won't be at home with your feet kicked up like I wonder if I would have fun <laughs> so those are two of the main things for me along with like music or just going to the movie so just really finding different ways to just do things for myself okay cool that's what's up that's what's up you actually said something that i want to tap into a little bit if, okay. if you don't mind because um when it comes the word that popped in my head uh where it's just like you know putting essentially like putting people above yourself wanting to make everybody happy like the word that's coming to my head is people pleasing and yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just like um, when you have that kind of personality, it's almost like a, a process that happens when you finally get to a point where you start choosing yourself. Yeah. And like, I want to kind of just like dig into it just a little bit and kind of like explain it, like 
talk to people about it. Cause like one thing that I like to stress here is that it's okay to choose yourself. You know, and like when when you're you're the type of person that likes to make everybody else happy, it's almost like a guilt that can come with it. Like, you know, I I, I want people there with me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, cause for me, like my version is just like I want people to come along the way with me. Right. Yeah. Like if I'm growing, I'm healing, I'm changing, like I want you to come too, because I see where we can go. But you know, one of the hardest things for me to understand is that everybody is not meant to go. Yeah. It won't. And like in order for you to live life, you kind of got to have to let some things go, have to let some people go, have to say no to some things, have to put yourself outside of the comfort zone and do things like that. So like, what are your thoughts on that? And like getting out of it, like people pleasing and like, why not choose yourself? Like, what advice do you have for people that are dealing with that, that kind of thing? I think the more time you spend where you're not in a position to have to compromise your wants and needs, it makes it easier to have more of a backbone and more boundaries because you stop going with the flow as much. I feel like when I was younger, I was always known as like that friend that just goes with the flow where it got to a point where people were so sure that they knew I was cool with everything. They would just stop asking me for stuff. So for instance, like trying to think of an example like if, okay, so say for instance, like me and you, we hanging out, um, we got plans to go somewhere. This, when we like in high school, neither one of us have a license. And because I was so much the go with the flow friend on such a deep level, you might have a friend that I'm cordial with, but I'm not cool with like that. And because I was always like go with the flow and one of my parents was picking us up, you'd be like, oh, I'll just tell Rachel that we need to pick this person up when we get to my house because their thought process was like, oh, she don't mind. She's not going to say no. And as I started to come into my own and learn more about me, I stopped doing that as much because it's like I was able to realize here are things I like, here are things I don't like, here are things that fall in the middle, here are things that are just red flags where it's like absolutely not. But you have to be in tune with yourself to be able to identify those things. And if you're a person where you're always focused on other people and making sure they're happy if you're always in everybody's face you can't really be able to say like this isn't who I am this isn't something I enjoy because you're so used to just doing what majority of everyone else is doing versus being able to you know go out try something and be like I didn't enjoy that so then when it comes to a group setting you can say no I really don't want to go to an oyster bar I don't even like oysters can we get pizza versus being like yeah that's cool and now you just spend fifty dollars on food you don't even you don't like, and you're still hungry, but everybody else happy. So it's just little things like that of just investing into yourself that you start to see the profit and you become happier because you're doing what makes you happy versus everybody else. Yeah, you'll still have to compromise, but you're staying true to yourself more. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's so important to get to know yourself. It's almost like you can't really do anything until you know yourself you can't really do anything authentically until you know yourself because otherwise you just just kind of like really going through the motions right like when i i remember it was so so crazy from one one of my friends we not even we ain't even cool like that no more but for one of my friends birthdays um in the past he wants to go to a strip club wants to go to a strip club now i'm not that type of person like yeah. I'm not I've never I never really have been because like I would be the type of person to be like going to the strip club like why like why yeah. I-, I don't get it you know what I'm saying it's just like I'm I'm not judging but it just does nothing for me it yeah it does nothing for me and it's just like I've only been twice in my life and it's just like the two times that I went is both times I'm sitting there like I don't belong here like yeah. I like don't you're there because you're with friends, but it wasn't something that you would just ha- wake up on a Friday and be like, here's what I want to do tonight. Yeah, like, yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Just give my money away for something I'm not really entertained by. Like, you know, I is and and once I, I remember coming home the last time because I was significantly older than the first time and I'm going home and I was just like, I could have been with my dog. What? <laughs> I, <laughs> I didn't have to be here right now. You know what I'm saying? And after you do a couple things like that and you start, and but the reason why I could 
say that the second time and not the first time was because I had spent time getting to know myself and I'm going home like I didn't enjoy that. I did not enjoy that. I could have I could have missed that. You know what I'm saying? And I think when you had that like fear of missing out, well, I, I need to go because like, what am I missing? Like these people need me there or whatever. It's just like, they're all right. It's OK. Yeah. You don't have to say yes to everything or everybody. You know what I'm saying? It's OK to say no to some things like if you ain't feeling it, it's OK to not feel it, you know, but also at the same time, making those people happy or what's keeping you from the people and the things that actually get you and what you enjoy, you know, so you can have those real life experiences. You know what I'm saying? Like one more thing is just like when I moved to te see before I moved to Texas, I was a little ratchet baby. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little ratchet. Ain't wrong with ratchet. I mean, I'm from St. Louis. Of course I'm a little Ain't rich. Wrong with rent. Is this where we get along? <laughs> no, no. Baby, yeah. <laughs> But you know what I'm saying? I was a baby. So, you know, like something, some parts of myself, I was suppressed. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, the ratchet baby is a part of me, but there are several other parts of me as well. Yeah. And like, you know, I would just do things to appease my friends, right? So it's yeah. just like the music I would listen to, I wouldn't tell them all the music I would listen to. I would just listen to the music that I knew they liked that I also liked and stuff like that. So once I moved to Texas, I started making some different types of friends and I stopped, found myself doing things. Like I remember I went to a Tyler the Creator concert and I was just like, I don't even know none of his music. And then I wound up falling in love with his catalog, not just the album, the catalog. In it, like, hold on, y'all on to something. Yeah, and you know what I'm saying? But it took me stepping outside that box and meeting some new people. And it's just like, you know, people that I vibe differently with, better with you know what i'm saying and they didn't make me feel like i had to suppress parts of myself but again you gotta get to know yourself yeah and when you first cross over into that it's like super exciting but yet almost scary of realizing like man i'm so used to going with the flow but i'm connecting to people on a level i didn't even know i could you know what i mean like you you start off sticking to what you know of like okay these are people i connect with these are my friends let me just kind of stick to what it's comfortable, but then you start branching out to a whole new world, and you're like, wait a second. I didn't even know this exists. I didn't even know I could bond with people, and it's always a great feeling when you can just really let your ha hair down and be 100% you without hiding parts of yourself, and people still enjoy that. Like, you don't have to try to blend in or switch up or change. You can be like, yo, this is who I am, or you start getting to that point of, like, the stuff you don't normally talk about just throwing it out there and seeing what happens. And they're like, I'm into that too. Wait a second. <laughs> That's a dope feeling. Yeah, it's a it's a super it's a super dope feeling. And you know what I'm saying? And and it's possible. Like I always like bringing these things up to show people like, yeah, it's totally possible to have this kind of thing. Like you might have to make some sacrifices along the way. Cause like you said, it is scary because you gotta let some things go. Like I had to let a lot of people go to get to this place where I'm at now, what? you know, now that I'm here, you know what I'm saying? I get to do things that I enjoy, you know what I'm saying? With people I enjoy, like I get to talk to people like you where like after a couple conversations, so I'm talking to you more, like what's your number? Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And it's just like, and you know, and that's being your full self, you know, and even with this whole thing, cause I think we met in God's business plan, right? Yeah. Even that concept where it's just like so many people who are peers of ours, you know, might not have ever met each other a day in our lives. But, you know what I'm saying? It's just people in a group that do so many different things, but can still connect and support each other in different ways. But, you know, if you were still in the box, you wouldn't have it. And then that all ties back into you know, what we were talking about earlier about just walking in your purpose and doing, you know, what you were designed to do, life puts you in a position where it starts opening those doors for you to meet people that you're connected to on a deeper level, because now you're surrounding yourself with people who will understand you better versus hiding those parts of, your, of yourself, being too busy thinking about like how are other people going to perceive it versus being like, you know what, this is who I am. And yeah. then stuff in your life starts changing and you're like, wait a minute, I should have been doing this. 